Hello students, welcome back to our channel. Students, in this video, we are going to study about magnetic materials and their very important properties. This topic is from class 12 physics chapter 5, Magnetism and Matter. Let's start. So, there are three types of magnetic substances. All the substances can be classified into three categories. Diamagnetic when it comes to their magnetic properties, right? So, based on magnetic properties, we can classify substances in three categories. One is diamagnetic, one is paramagnetic, one is ferromagnetic. So, what is the difference? We know that everything is made up of atoms, right? Here, <coughs> we have a substance. This is, this is a material of a substance, right? And this is made up of atoms. So, it is made up of atoms. So, what happens? Every atom in itself is a magnetic dipole, right? Every atom in itself is a magnetic dipole. How? Let us say this is an atom and in the, in the center of this atom, there is a central core which we all know is called nucleus and in nucleus, we have protons and neutrons and around this nucleus, electrons are moving in circular orbits. Now, suppose an electron is moving around this nuclear in this manner, that is in anti-clockwise sense and we know that the direction of current is opposite to the direction of motion of an electron, which means that if electron is moving in anti-clockwise sense, we can assume that current here is in clockwise sense. Whenever there is a motion of electrons or flow of electrons, a current is always associated with that, right? So, if electrons are moving in this manner, then there is a current in this manner. Let us show that current by some other color. This is current, right? Current I, because we take the direction of current opposite to the direction of motion of electrons. So, this is current I, right? Okay, so we can clearly see that this current is in clockwise sense. So, if we see this current from the opposite direction, right, if, if from this side, if this current is clockwise, then from opposite side, this current seems to be anti-clockwise. And we all know that in a circular loop, from the face, if we are looking from this face and we are seeing that current is clockwise, then that face behaves as a south pole, right, and the opposite face in which the current is anti-clockwise behaves as north pole. So, if we can compare this orbit of electron with a circular loop carrying current, so we can say that current if from this phase is in clockwise, so we can say that this phase of the atom will behave as a south pole and the opposite phase will behave as north pole. So, we can clearly see that every atom in itself is a magnetic dipole and every magnetic dipole has a very important physical quantity linked with it, which is called the magnetic moment. So, every atom has a magnetic moment. The direction of magnetic moment is from south to north. So, every atom has a magnetic moment. And since magnetic moment is a vector quantity, and this substance or any substance is made up of millions and trillions of atoms. So, each of those atoms has an individual dipole moment, which is a vector quantity. So, all the dipole moments add up to a net dipole moment of the substance. Since the dipole moment is vector quantity, so all the dipole moments can be added up to zero also, if they cancel each other. Or they can have a non-zero value if they do not cancel each other. Right? Okay. So, what happens in a diamagnetic substance, all the magnetic moments, when, when, a, when, a di, when, a, when a substance is kept in an external magnetic field, right? When a substance is kept in an external magnetic field and due to that external magnetic field, all the magnetic moments, all the magnetic moments of every electron, they get aligned opposite to the direction of the electric, the external magnetic field, right? So, so what happens? when this type of substance which is called mag uh, diamagnetic is placed in an external magnetic field a magnetism is induced in the substance opposite to the direction of external magnetic field and very 
very light magnetism, very small magnetism is induced in this substance which is called diamagnetic when it is placed in external magnetic field and that substance in which the internal magnetism which is induced due to external magnetic field is in opposite direction, right? This is the external magnetic field which is in this direction and due to the alignment of dipoles, the magnetic field induced in this substance is in opposite direction to the external magnetic field. Such type of substance is called a diamagnetic substance. If the external magnetic field is not applied, then all the all these magnetic dipoles are aligned in random manner and the net magnetic movement or net magnetic field inside the substance is zero in the in the absence of external magnetic field when there is no external magnetic field then the net magnetic field inside this substance or the net magnetic movement of this substance is zero but when the external magnetic field is applied a small magnetism is induced in this substance opposite to the external magnetic field okay what about paramagnetic substance paramagnetic substance is a substance which also has a net zero magnetic moment in the absence of external magnetic field but when this substance is kept in a magnetic field then all the domains are aligned in such a manner that the internal magnetic field induced in paramagnetic substance is in direction of the external magnetic field and this is also a weak magnetic field right so we can say that this substance gets weakly magnetized opposite to the direction of external magnetic field and this substance gets weakly magnetized in the direction of magnetic field right and what about ferromagnetic ferromagnetic is a substance which has a non zero magnetic field even in the absence of external magnetic field because the domains the the magnetic moments of this substance are aligned in such a manner that they have a net non zero magnetic moment even in the absence of external magnetic field so when we apply the external magnetic field an, an extra magnetic field gets induced in this substance which is in the direction of the external magnetic field so the both the magnetic fields add up first a magnetic field was already there when there was no external field and when the external field is applied more magnetic field is induced as happened in the paramagnetic substance so what happens the total magnetic field inside this substance is very high in the in in the presence of external magnetic field so this substance gets magnetized opposite to the direction of external magnetic field and it is it is it has non it has zero magnetic movement in the absence of external magnetic field this substance also has a non zero magnetic field in the absence of external magnetic field but when the external magnetic field is applied it gets magnetized in the direction of external magnetic field weakly magnetized and this gets strongly magnetized in the in the presence of external magnetic field in the direction of external magnetic field because it has its own magnetism even when the magnetic field was not there right so these are the three types of substance we are going to study the properties of these substances different different properties so first is diamagnetic diamagnetic substances are feebly repelled by magnets obviously because the magnetic moment induced in the diamagnetic magnetic substance is opposite to the external magnetic field right so they they do not get attracted towards the magnetic field they get repelled by magnets right paramagnetic substances are attracted by magnets and ferromagnetic substances because they have very strong magnetic field obviously they are strongly attracted by the magnets okay second property acquire feeble magnetism in the direction opposite of magnetizing field magnetizing field means the external magnetic field which is magnetizing this substance and these acquire feeble magnetism in the direction of magnetizing field and these acquire strong magnetism in the direction of magnetizing field a freely suspended magnetic rod aligns itself perpendicular to the field what happens in case of a diamagnetic substance suppose we are freely aligning we are freely suspending a rod of diamagnetic material in an external magnetic field right so this is an external magnetic field this this is north this is south so this is the external magnetic field and since 
diamagnetic substance is repelled by external magnetic field so what happens so what happens it tries to it tries to align itself in a direction in which there is no magnetic field and since magnetic field is a vector quantity and a vector do not have any component perpendicular to its direction so this magnetic field does not have any component in this direction so when it is freely suspended in the magnetic field and it's it comes to rest it comes to rest in a direction perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field and if this rod is made up of a paramagnetic substance so it will align itself in the direction of external magnetic field because the internal magnetic field which is induced in this substance is in the direction of the external magnetic field and same happens with the ferromagnetic substance also but if it takes few seconds it it will be aligned immediately right so more or less paramagnetic and ferromagnetic substances have same properties but the thing is it if if like if 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 it is aligning in the direction of magnetic field it will take some time and it will do that immediately because it is stronger when uh, uh, it has stronger magnetic field inside it right susceptibility is small and negative now what is susceptibility susceptibility is represented by this chi magnetic susceptibility is represented by this symbol chi and this is m by h this is the ratio of m m is the dipole moment induced per unit volume and h is the intensity of the external magnetizing field so it simply gives you a ratio ki how much magnetism is induced by applying how much magnetism this is a measure of the magnetism which is induced in the substance and this is the measure of the magnetism which is applied externally right so this gives an idea of how much how much magnetism is induced in the substance by applying how much external magnetism and since since in diamagnetic substance weak magnetism is induced and it is induced in the extra, in the opposite direction right so the direction of m and h the direction of m and h is opposite to each other so since m and h both are vectors dipole moment and external magnetizing field they both are vector quantities so we can say that these two have opposite directions and and if these two have opposite direction then this should be negative because both these are vectors so if if one of them has opposite direction so we will put a negative sign so susceptibility is small and negative and similarly the susceptibility of the paramagnetic sub, uh, paramagnetic i'm mixing these two words paramagnetic substance sub, sub, susceptibility of paramagnetic substance is small and positive because m and h both are in same direction and obviously the susceptibility of ferromagnetic substance is very large more than 1000 because by applying a very small magnetic field a very large magnetic field is induced in ferromagnetic substance so numerator is very large as compared to the denominator relative permeability is slightly less than 1 relative permeability is what mu r relative permeability of the substance is what it is mu r which is mu m by mu not right relative permeability of the substance is the permeability of the ratio of the permeability of the substance divided by the permeability of free space and since diamagnetic substance has permeability which is less than the permeability of free space so this ratio comes out to be less than 1 and permeability of paramagnetic substance is more than the permeability of the free space so this ratio comes slightly greater than 1 and the permeability of a ferromagnetic substance is much 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 more than the permeability of this free space so this comes in order of thousands right so now let's again talk about the susceptibility susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance does not depend upon temperature susceptibility of paramagnetic substance is inversely proportional to temperature as the temperature increases susceptibility decreases it it when the temperature increases it gets difficult to magnetize a paramagnetic substance because paramagnetic substance gets magnetized due to the alignment of dipoles 
so when the temperature is increased they have more energy and it is difficult to align them in a particular direction and susceptibility of ferromagnetic also decreases with temperature but in a complex manner this decreases with temperature in a linear manner so we can we can say that susceptibility is inversely proportional to the temperature but susceptibility of this is inversely proportional to the temperature in somewhat complicated manner t minus tc where t is the temperature and tc is called the curie temperature which is a temperature at which uh, the behavior of the magnetic material changes but we are not going into that we are because this is not based on the curie law so we are just discussing the properties right okay next is if the diamagnetic substance is a liquid right if the diamagnetic substance is a liquid and that liquid is placed in a non uniform magnetic field like this liquid is placed in a non uniform magnetic field so it gets arranged itself in the direction it gets accumulated in that particular part of the region where the magnetic field is weak so it a, a magnetic a diamagnetic substance moves from the stronger to the weaker parts of the field field is strong near the poles right so we can clearly see that after some time what happens we have kept this substance like this and after some time this happens that it gets accumulated at the center and the amount of this substance near the poles is decreased because it is moving away from the poles because the magnetic field is stronger at poles so if if the substance is paramagnetic opposite thing happens because the paramagnetic substance moves from weaker to the stronger parts of the field so what happens uh, if if we have placed a paramagnetic liquid like this it will move towards the poles and after some time it will look like this and same happens with the uh, ferromagnetic substance but uh, ferromagnetic substances are rarely liquids they are generally solids so uh, we can make this diagram for that also but uh, we we should restrict this property to paramagnetic and diamagnetic substances only hmm magnetization lasts as long as the magnetizing field is applied so the magnetization of diamagnetic substance is till when the external magnetic field is there when the external magnetic field is removed so the magnetism of this diamagnetic substance is also vanishes and same happens with the magnetiz uh, magnetization of the paramagnetic substance because in the absence of external magnetic field as we have discussed before in the absence of external magnetic field the dipoles of both these substances they are randomly aligned so the net dipole moment is zero so when the external magnetic field is applied those dipoles feel a torque and they align themselves in the direction of magnetic field in this case and in the direction opposite to the direction of magnetic field in this case so when we when we uh, remove the external magnetic field obviously the magnetism of both these substances will vanish but the magnetism of ferromagnetic substance will be retained even after the removal of magnetic field because its domains are aligned in a particular direction even in the absence of external magnetic field so it has a net non zero dipole moment this is shown by solids liquid and gases ferromagnetism is also shown by solid liquid and gases but ferromagnetism is shown by solids generally examples are bismuth for diamagnetic substance examples are bismuth copper ho gaya antimony silicon nitrogen at stp water nacl all these substances are diamagnetic and uh, uh, paramagnetic substances are aluminum sodium calcium oxygen copper chloride and ferromagnetic substances are iron we all know we have played with iron and magnets in our childhood iron nickel cobalt fe2o3 is ferric oxide and alnico alnico is an alloy of aluminium nickel and cobalt so all these are solids right so these are the examples of diamagnetic paramagnetic and ferromagnetic substances so these properties are very important sometimes a big question also comes from this topic when uh, the weightage of that question is 3 to 5 marks where you have to compare five six properties of all the substances but a small question also comes of one or two marks which is based on 
few uh, one two one or two or three properties of these substances so all the properties are very important all the values that we have discussed like susceptibility relative magnetic permeability all these values are very important examples are very important you can get different questions based on different different sections of this table so prepare them very carefully i'll meet you in the next lecture till then all the best.